Peter Rose along with Currency Trading. Uh, it's early March of 2022. It's really cold, so I'm not going outside to take you out there today. It's like 10 degrees. Uh, so, but how to ladder scalp a forex position? What, 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 you know, what does that mean? What am I talking about here? Um, I use the term ladder scalp uh, as a way to describe a common scalping methodology because of the manner in which um, a series of trades is executed. Now, the critical thing here is uh, risk management because um, although it's very similar to the way that you would trail stops when you're trading zone to zone between structural congestion areas, you have to be careful because when you're scalping, you're grabbing small profits and you're doing many, many, many of those trades, but if you don't watch your, your loss value, um, one loss can wipe off, you know, a whole series of scalps. And it's different. Um, win to loss ratio means very little in scalping. It, it, it loses significance when the data points that you're collecting, the scalping profits and losses, are close together in proximity. Um, I mean, it's like uh, trying to get your uh, average time in a, uh, in a swim competition, for example. Uh, your, your average time to cover distance is much better calculated and reasonable as an average if you're talking about, like if you swam an Olympic pool length. But if you're swimming a, a hot tub distance or, or a small lap pool that's like 10 feet or 15, 20 feet, you understand that your your end to end the distance is not significant enough in order for you to develop a reasonable calculation of what you could do if you went into a, a, a larger pool. And so if you're uh, doing regular trading, um, because you don't scalp all the time. Short-term day trading, where you're flat at the end of the day, where you're placing maybe uh, six or eight trades during the day, is different than if you're actually scalping. Scalping means you're not going for more than two or three pips at a time. You're out, you look for the next opportunity, you go back in, you're trading on the uh, one-minute chart, for example, or even the five-second chart, uh, banging back and forth there. <clears throat> so. It's a different animal altogether, and and you're not able to set um, a, a limit stop order because you don't have time. You may place three or four trades in 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 a minute, so you don't have time to be screwing around, moving a stop around, and having such things um, in your mind stop loss points, even profit targets, <clears throat> is counterproductive to scalping. And scalping is a whole other um, thing. It's exactly the same as if you were doing day trading. It's exactly the same as if you were trading, uh, position trading out on the, on, on the four hour or the daily chart. It's the same thing. It's just when you do it and the time frame that you're involved in the, in, in, uh, the number of trades that you're executing. Like I said, you could execute execute two or three trades a minute. Um, you know, I <clears throat> I haven't been that rabid about it when I've done scalping. Um, I might, in the course of an hour, two hours, if I'm scalping, I might run out twenty trades or something like that. So. <clears throat> The problem, obviously, in scalping in the forex market is the spread that your particular broker is throwing on to that currency pair, um, and it's broker dependent. Well, and it's you know whether you're an ACN broker or you're 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 taking the other side of the trade and then uh, pushing that off on somebody else. You're, you've got a spread. Whatever that spread is, there. Um, Let's say your spread is. Let's say you're 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 in a broker, 
where you're putting so much volume through that instead of the regular um, one and a quarter or one and a half pip spread, they give you a three quarter pip spread. Uh, you're still, I mean, l l let's say it's a, let's say it's a, a one pip just to make it easy. So you got a pip aside, right? Or half a pip aside. Uh, half a pip when you're going for a two pip profit target, right? Is uh, that's a 25% of your profit. That, so if you're going to get two pips, you're going to have to get two and a half to pay the VIG, right? Whereas if you're trading even on a day trading basis and you're paying the full one and a half pip spread, you're, you get chewed for uh, three quarters of a pip on, on, the, on the entry or the, or the exit, whichever way you, you're doubling it up. You're still paying a pip and a half, right? Um, so even on the two pip spread, you chew, you're, chewing a, you're chewing a full pip. So in order to get two pips, you got to get three. In order to get three, you're going to have to get four. So um, you're compressing all of that um, spread and profit into such a constrained piece of real estate <clears throat> that anything you've had before about win to loss ratio, how you evaluate your your um, trade entry and all that stuff, man, that just goes out the window when you're scalping, right? I mean, if you haven't tried it before, and don't do it on a simulated account. Don't waste your time. Don't Look, once you have the basic mechanics of trading, get yourself onto a real account and risk real money because you're, that's the only way you're going to learn. That's my theory. I'm sorry if you lose three or four hundred dollars trading your mini lot before you figure things out. Uh, that's the price that you're going to have to. It's the price you're going to have to pay. And even then, you may not be learning it without the help of somebody else to, to come in and show you what's going on. But regardless of all that, do not do this stuff on a on a uh, uh, simulated account. But in any event, when you're scalping, are you still doing? Um, risk analysis? Are you doing trade entry analysis? Are you looking for a profit target? Do you really, the question, the question really comes up, if you're going to scalp, do you really have time for any of that? And you don't. That's the answer. And so that's where the, where the, where the laddering comes in, is that you have to have, you can't start out learning how to scalp. You've got to start out at least learning how to a day trade. And the reason I say day trade is because you got to be flat at the end of the day. You're not going to be doing any carry trades. You don't have to worry about carry interest. You're not. You're not trying to make, you know, ten bucks of carry interest for the day. It just. You don't. You know, none of that stuff is is in there. And in fact, even this issues of scalping and all that. I mean, um, staging and all that stuff are, you know, are are many times mute if you're trying to get your trading done in a couple hour period of time. If you're going to do your day trading and you're willing to let the trade run uh, for three or four or five hours, I, I mean, I can't imagine doing that. I, I, I don't have the skill to do that. And I don't want to sit there um, managing uh, day trades. Uh, that's not my, that's, well, that's not what I want to do. And so I'm going to be talking about what I want to do on this channel. So if that's not what you want to do, or you disagree with it, don't watch the videos. Don't call me up and ask me for help. It's just, <laughs> you wouldn't like my mentoring. You wouldn't like the prizes either. But regardless of that, if, you're, if you've got some experience um, in short-term trading, and you, and, you, and you think, well, geez, I'd like to... I'd like to take a swing at this scalping, then you're going to have to use this laddered approach, and I'll get into that in a minute. But I want to make sure that we set the, the groundwork well for you so that you don't have a, 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 an expectation of how you're going to do entry analysis and setting stops and all that other stuff that you need to do when you're doing real day trading, because you don't have time for that. That's why you need a lot of experience 
in the day trading before you'd attempt to do any scalps. And I'd say you'd need anywhere from when you're trading consistently that you'd have three or 400 trades of consistent backdrop so that you know that you have a really good win to loss ratio uh, in your day trading. Because what that indicates is that you, you understand how to look at a position <clears throat> and judge its entry viability. Because you're, you're going to be using the same thing when you're scalping, except you're not going to be doing all the analysis. You're going to be doing it instinctively. It's like driving a car and making a, making a left-hand turn, if you happen to be in the countries where a left-hand turn is against the oncoming traffic. Um, when you're learning how to drive, there's so much shit going through your head, and it's a very scary thing to make a left-hand turn. Whereas after you're more experienced, your intuitiveness takes over and you scan the environment and you make your left-hand turn. Scalping is the same way. Uh, you, can't, you can't learn trading scalping. And if you do learn to scalp, um, those skills are not transferable up. They're not. If you are a day trader, those skills are transferable up, but the longer term is not transferable down. If you're a scalper, those skills are not transferable up. <laughs> because you'll get, you will get creamed. But look, if you're a good scalper, you can be done in 15 minutes for the day. I mean, how many pips a day do you need? 10? 10 pips? If you're making 15 pips a day, you're doing really, really well. Maybe not if you're trading with a five mini account, but come on, you know, at five bucks a, 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 a thing. But if you're trading with a hundred thousand dollar account uh, and, and ten pips, that's a thousand bucks a day, All right? So um, even a, even a um, fifty thousand dollar account, ten pips, that's five hundred dollars a day. So, um, but but again, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and you don't know how to do your risk management and your win to loss is kind of so-so, um, that just indicates that you really don't understand that entry theory. And so you really can't go down and try the scalping because you, you're not intuitively trading. Once you're experienced in your day trading and you've got a, a, a good uh, um, equity curve and your win to loss ratio has been proven out over 300 trades or so, you're not doing all that mental gymnastics of evaluating where the profit target is, evaluating your structural constructs around the, around the immediacy of your, your trade environment. You're not running calculations of, of where your risk is and how you're going to trail your stop and whether you're going to be staging or not staging. There's all those kinds of issues that come into play when you're doing your entry analysis, right? And so um, all that stuff goes away when you scalp. You're not going to stage into a scalp position. <laughs> you're not going to be setting limit orders, okay? So <laughs> you're going to be trading by the seat of your pants. You're going to be trading out of your gut, as Curtis Faith uh, would put it. Or, or instinctively, you know, gut instinct, or I've done videos on that and, 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 and talked about that. Um, so you might want to go back and, and see if you can find the titles of those that, that talk about the difference between instinct and gut in your, in your trading. But <clears throat> when you get into the scalping, after all that I've said, if you haven't scalped before, you're probably going to say, well, what the hell do I do? How do you do this? And that's where the ladder comes in. You know what a ladder is, right? Put your hand up and you pull yourself up and bring your foot up to the next rung. And you rest there for a minute. And then you take that next step. And that's what you're doing in scalping, is in, in, you're instinctively seeing the momentum increase in the price and you're down on a shorter time frame and you know that the, you're looking at the five minute time frame and the candle bars on the five minute, maybe let's say they were um, five pips. And now those five minute bars are like going to seven and eight pips. 
So now you're trading down on a one minute or a five second uh, chart. You've got a five pip ATR up on the five minute that is going to be reflected in what's going on down on those lower one minute and, and five second time frames. You don't get the five, the eight minute five period bar without having larger, like down on the one minute chart, you may have um, one and a half pip bars. Well, maybe those are going to go to two and a quarter pips. Well, eventually over a five minute period of time, that's going to work out to an eight pip uh, five minute candle, right? I mean, things start out on the five second chart. So if you're scalping, you're catching that shit early, but you have to understand where the momentum is. You have to be very, very aware of that momentum because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be laddering up um, based on an 80% uh, profit target of whatever it's on the five minute bar. So if you're... Um, five minute candle has a five period ATR, you're going to be looking for about um, uh, four, four pips when you're scalping, right? Because you're, 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 you're trying to catch that, trying to catch that momentum. So if that five period bar starts going to eight or seven, in other words, it's, 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 it's consistently over the maybe two two bars is over the average ATR, which is a 14 period ATR, right? Then down on the five second or the one minute chart, you've got some confidence that that momentum, you've got, you've got some real estate in order to do your scalping. And so how far is it safe to go up? It's safe to go up and look for grabbing uh, three to five pips because you've got an eight pip, um, hunk of real estate to run, right? I hope you're getting this. If you don't, send me an email and I, I, I'll go over it a little bit with you. Or maybe I should do a blog post on it. I can do a diagram for you. Everybody's always asking me, why don't you do diagrams? Why don't you show this on the chart? No, 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 no. <laughs> you know why? Because if you see something on a real chart, you're going to look for that on a real chart. And guess what? You're not going to find it. Because you're not thinking. You're not basing the stuff on principle. You're basing it on a pattern that you see somebody else doing on a chart that he recognizes more information in than you're seeing. That's why anytime I do uh, graphs or charts or diagrams or stuff on the whiteboard or whatever, it's squiggly lines. I never use uh, real charts. Unless I want to show like a pin bar or something like that. I'll show you a real chart. This is what a pin bar looks like. <laughs> Doesn't do much good on a whiteboard to show a long tail. Because <laughs> you go, what the hell is that? Well, how do I take that in, into context within all the other bars? Oh my God. Okay. So let's say we've got, on the five minute chart, we've got an eight period ATR. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, we've got a five period ATR. The last two candles have been seven and eight pips. It looks like they're going to go up a little bit. I'm trading down on the five second and one minute. I'm looking for four pips on my scalps. I go in, I have an intuitive view of it. I go into the thing, I get three or four pips. Boom, I'm out. You don't hold it. You get out. Where do you set your pip? Uh, where do you set your stop? You, well, you got to set the stop to be equal to what you're trying to get. Because if you're good in your intuitive view of the things, you'll get two or three wins out of the one that you may lose. And so, because you're not gonna win every time, right? You never do. So you wanna really be really religiously uh, geared in on where you're gonna, where you're gonna get out. And so, on your trading platform, you have to you have to really watch the pips uh, that are involved. Don't do it on the money. Oh my God, I just lost uh, three hundred dollars. No, no, you, you, you know you've lost three pips. Uh, that's what you've lost. Just let's not get crazy about it. Because um, you're trying to make three or four. Well, then now you're going to make three or four the next three times. Because you're 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 um, 75 percent 
your, your hit rates can be much larger in a scalp environment. They better be much larger in a scalp environment because of the because when you finally run into the point where that five minute candle is going to drop to a three minute candle, that's going to be referenced down on that one minute chart. So you don't want to be in there. Uh, for example, if you've been scalping long and you and you lose one, you do not want to go back in until another couple of five minute bars have gone by in order for you to understand whether that um, price action is going to continue solidly in the direction that you wanted it to go in, or are we looking at maybe a 10 or a, or a 15 pip retracement on, the, the, on whatever that five minute uh, trend has been. So you're doing, e even though you're um, scalping, uh, you're, you're relying on your uh, multiple time frame analysis in order to determine what's a reasonable uh, profit target goal here. And you're not doing this in real time. You, you step back and you do your analysis of the chart and price action as it's going on. You're looking at the five minute chart and you're, you're not looking at that <clears throat> you're not looking, if you're scalping, you're not looking at the five second and the one minute chart, boys and girls. You're looking at the five minute chart. And you're seeing what the momentum continuation is on that five minute chart. And then you can drop down, take a look at what it's doing right then, and then you start banging away. Only in the direction where the five period moving averages are all going up, the momentum of that five, uh, Five minute chart, uh, five period chart, yeah, five minute chart is going uh, in the direction of. Do the moving averages confirm that? Uh, hopefully, you're if you're going up, you're not too close to a um, a, uh, a, re a resistance zone. Uh, all those things that you would go out macroscopically on a day trade. That's what you're doing when you're looking for what direction you're going to trade in. You're doing multiple time frame analysis for scalping the same way that you would do it for um, um, day trading. But once that momentum is established and once the direction is established and once you determine you're not too close to some bump that may retard that movement, you drop down onto your one minute and five second and you start laddering those trades. And go up three or, three or four pips, get out, see what happens. If it continues to go up, it's got to be a new bar, right? And if it continues to go up, boom, you go in. If it turns around and goes against you, I don't even wait um, like that four pips. If I had a, a four pip stop, I would get out at one or two pips. I, I do that all the time. I, I just don't want to lose any money when I'm scalping because <clears throat> as soon as you go, oh, I'm going to let this breathe a little bit, and it goes 10 or 15 pips, like <laughs> it just drops like shit through a goose, right? And it goes 10 or 15 pips because you don't have a stop. And you go, ah, I want to get out. <laughs> just let the fucker go because it's going to take your account. It's going to take a lot of money out. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell you. So, how do, you, how do you ladder a uh, Forex scalping position? By looking at that uh, five period ATR and making a decision that about 80% of the increased size of that bar is what you're, gonna be, what you're gonna be looking as your profit target. And man, just trade with a really short stop, okay? Be safe, have a lot of fun with it. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.